Chelsea against Brighton and Old Albion. The Blues host the Seagulls in their chase of a first home win in the Premier League this season as Frank Lampard provides some very, very interesting injury updates while stating that Fikayo Tomori is now Chelsea's number one or two centre-back. Hello there guys and welcome back to Blues TV for another preview of mine on this channel as I preview the game between Chelsea and Brighton as we go into our fourth successive Premier, oh, no, Premier League home game, but home game. And I'm slightly confused by that. Like all week I was just, you know, having this Brighton game in my head as an away game. But out of nowhere yesterday I realised, oh, it's another home game. Not 100% sure why that is the case, but I'm most certainly looking forward to it because it finally gives us, well, I say finally, it just gives us another chance to finally get that first Premier League home win of the season because it's quite bad that we're in late September now and we still haven't won at home. Now, like obviously in the league that is. I mean, if we don't win tomorrow, then we won't have won a home game in August and September. That would be a bit of an issue. So let's win the game tomorrow. And of course, if you are new to Blues TV, please be sure to subscribe. That would be massively appreciated. Of course, also be sure to click the notification bell button and choose to be notified about all uploads so you don't miss any of our future content and our future uploads. And also, if you want to you know, drop a like on this video, that'd be massively appreciated. You're watching this already anyway. So might as well drop a like. I would honestly massively appreciate it. And it doesn't really cost you much time and especially it doesn't cost you any money. But now let's just get into the preview and starting it off by speaking about our opposition. And that, of course, is Brighton, Brighton and North Albion. And, um, you know, just a couple of things about them. They're currently sitting 15th in the table on six points from six games with one win, three draws and two defeats and a goal difference of minus three, scoring five, but also conceding eight thus far this season. And to me, they're a bit of a strange team, really. I mean, they finished 17th, you know, last season, two points from relegation. Then they sacked their long-term manager, Chris Hewton, signed a couple of decent players like Aaron Moy, for example, from Huddersfield. But now they don't seem to be in all too much of a different situation or position at least. Bar their opening day 3-0 win over Watford, who, as we all know, are really struggling so far this season, except against Arsenal, obviously. Brighton's results haven't been great, like, at all. I mean, yeah, okay, an acceptable draw with West Ham, but defeats to Southampton, okay, understandably so, Man City. But that, alongside draws against Burnley and Newcastle, doesn't really come across that significantly improved compared to last season. Plus, in midweek, they also, you know, while doing a lot of rotation, but still they were knocked out of the Carabao Cup with a 3-1 defeat um, at home against Aston Villa. So it's not, like, performance-wise, like, results-wise, it's not going that great. But saying all of that, in those draws, their stats and highlights, at least, because I couldn't watch all of their games, um, you know, say that they were the better team in, like I say, all of those draws by quite some margin as well. I mean, even when they were beat 2-0 by Southampton, they seem to at least have been even. So, you know, maybe it's a little bit of a story like for us this season when we were kind of better than our points tally says. Maybe it's just is a little bit like that for them as well. It's difficult to tell when you can't watch their full games. But, you know, stats and highlights, you know, they do tell you a pretty large amount of the story, I guess, of each game. And, you know, they definitely don't seem to have been as bad as the, the you know, the table might suggest. But putting the ball into the net really does seem to be a bit of an issue for them because, at least against their opponents so far, they've pretty much always created loads of chances, like literally loads of chances. Not always necessarily huge chances, big chances with the whole expected goal stat, but still, they did have plenty of chances, but just haven't, you know, taken them, I guess. Tactics and formation-wise, so far this season at least, they've always lined up in some sort of a three-at-the-back system, or five-at-the-back, whichever you want to call it, really. 3-4-3, three, 3-5-2, three, three, or even a 3-4-1-2. And whether that will have an effect on how Lampard sets Chelsea up tomorrow, I'll talk about that in a bit. And um, the last couple of things about Brighton really is they also face a couple of injury doubts as well, especially up front. There's both the new signing, Neil Mopai, um, who with two goals so far is their top scorer, um, as well as, of course, Glenn Murray. He's also out of the injured teams, um, plus quite a few others as well. And um, just generally about Brighton quickly, they do like to have the ball. I mean, we can't underestimate that. Even away at Man City, okay, they lost 4-0 in the end. But even away at the Etihad, they had 46% of the ball in the end. And they did create a couple of, you know, at least a handful of chances themselves as well. So no matter where they go, they will try to do their thing. And, you know, we have to be a little bit varied. So while their form and conversion rate really isn't the best, definitely do not underestimate them. It will be a tough game. But of course, Chelsea should be capable of finally getting that first home win in the league this season. And now, getting to Frank Lampard's pre-match press conference, which today was actually quite an interesting one. And to be honest, let's just get, get straight into it. And of course, it started off with team news and injury news, which is always the most interesting bit about all these press conferences. Now, first of all, Antonio Rüdiger is still out with a recurring, you know, groin injury. Um, Lampard said that he's hopeful that he won't be out for too long, but he can't give a date at all as to when we can expect him to be back. He did actually say Andreas Christensen, who of course had to come off against Liverpool, is actually, you know, fine and is back in training and he did train with the rest of the team today. Lampard did say he did still feel a little bit of pain, but he doesn't think it's a risk and 
confirmed that he that Christensen will be in the squad tomorrow. Not whether he'll start or anything, of course, but he will be part of the squad, so he is fine now, which of course is good. Same goes for Olivier Giroud, who wasn't injured or anything or wasn't just left out. He was actually ill um, for the Liverpool game and for the midweek game against Grimsby, hence why he wasn't in the squad either time. A couple of people that are still out injured are Emerson, you know, with the hamstring problem, he is out until after the next international break. And also there's some minor updates, I guess, on Ruben Loftus cheek because Lampard said that he has now progressed to slow jogging outside, which of course is great news because that just means he's getting closer and closer to returning to full training and then play, which of course is great. And then Lampard also said that both Reese James and Hudson Odoi will be in the squad tomorrow. Of course, again, didn't say whether they would start or just be on the bench. Most likely be on the bench, let's be honest now. But Lems did say that he will have to be a little bit careful with especially Hudson Odoi because you just have to be after such a long-term injury. But it sure did sound like, you know, Hudson Odoi is kind of likely at least to come off the bench. You know, and that, that would of course be interesting and good to see. Um, give us a little bit something different off the bench, I guess. But it's just great. I've, I know, of course, they played against Grimsby and they both started and both played the full 90 minutes. But still, three days later, they're all ready to be in the squad, part of the squad in a Premier League game. So, you know, I'm just looking forward to it. It's going to be great. And then towards the end, then, but while just talking about the youth and about, you know, the youth generally in football and in the Premier League and stuff, he also just he's kind of stated on the slide that Fikayo Tomori is now at number one or number two, I guess, you know, one of the two, he said, um, in the pecking order of the centre-backs. Like, it just shows how good Fikayo Tomori has been, but it's unbelievable. Like, he's been great ever since he's come into the team. And Frank Lampard seems to rate that. I'm slightly surprised that he would have said so openly that he's number one or two in the, pe in the pecking order. So, fair play. But... You know, you can't disagree with it with tomorrow's recent performance, especially against Liverpool, of course. And, you know, really, you have to be happy. But to be honest, that was it from the press conference. He did say a couple of things about Pulisic, but just the general things. Oh, he's a, it's a new league. It's a new way of living. It's a new club. And we can't, you know, ignore the price tag. He's still only 21. We have to give him time. We all know that. Like, if you're a somewhat smart Chelsea fan, you know that you can't expect Pulisic just because he costs a lot of money to be the next head and Hazard right away. It will take him a little bit of time. Um... But of course, you know, we still do expect a little bit better from him than we got against Grimsby. Now, coming to Chelsea and, you know, lineup wise, I don't think there's actually that many question marks, you know, this week. But because, like I said earlier already, Brighton do use the three at the back system. The real kind of question mark for the game tomorrow is whether we go with a three at the back, especially if Christensen is fit. If he isn't, we can't really play three at the back anyway, um, because I don't think Gray will start and I don't think Rios James will either. Hence, Aspi can't move into, back into right back and don't even connect me with crazy things like Pedro at right wing back. It's a nice idea in that, but I just cannot see it happening. I just cannot see Frank Lampard starting with something like that. And, um, you know, it's still, it is a big question mark. Even if Christensen is completely fit, I'm not 100% sure what Lampard will do, to be honest. I mean, had we only used it against Wolves, who of course use the three at the back system themselves, I'd be pretty confident that we'll use it again tomorrow. But because he also used it against Valencia, and then at the same time didn't use it against Liverpool when Alonso had to come on for Emerson, hence why the whole explanation of, okay, he only used it because Alonso played, all of those explanations are kind of out the, out the window now. So he used it against the three at the back team, but he also used it against Valencia. Then we thought, okay, maybe it's just because Alonso. Then Alonso has to come on against Liverpool, and we don't change to a three at the back, which, you know... Wouldn't, wouldn't have been ideal, of course, I get that, but it would have been somewhat possible. And at the same time, Alonso had a decent enough game against Liverpool. I didn't think it was awful at all. So, to be honest, I just have absolutely no idea. I don't know which one is the more likely. I personally prefer 4-3-3. You might know that. Um, but I will go through that now because I prefer it. And then I will also mention who I go with in a 3-4-3 formation because if we go three at the back, it will be a 3-4-3. And to be honest, yeah, it's not that complicated because it's just kind of the same team that played against Liverpool once Alonso was on for Emerson. Kepa, of course, in goal, a centre-back, you know, partnership of, you know, if Christensen is not at 100%, um, it will still, you know, have to be um, Vicario Tomori and Kurt Zuma. In the forward back, if Christensen is not 100%, I would personally not start him, you know, even if he's ready, basically, but just be safe. You know, it was a little bit of a knee problem and I don't want something that we had with Emerson last week happen again, that he plays 20 minutes and then has to come off again and he's out more long-term. So I don't want that happening. So if we go forward the back, which is also the reason why I would, again, lean towards the forward back more because I don't want to risk Christensen. We only have two centre-backs as it is right now. So, you know, I wouldn't do with uh, wouldn't do that. So, like I say, Tomori and Zuma in there in the forward back. Of course, the full-backs have to be Aspilicueta and Alonso. No one else there because I still don't see Reese James starting again already. Just played 90 minutes. His first 90 minutes after five months. It's not going to start again after three days. It's just not going to happen, really. Then coming to the midfield three... I mean, like I say, it's the same lineup that played against Liverpool. So Jorginho, um, Kante to his right and Kovacic to his left. Personally, I would actually like for Mason Mount to be dropped back into the midfield three because I think he personally can shine more there. But Hatsadoi isn't going to start again, similar to Reese James. 
and you know P Christian Pulisic neither was great against Grimsby nor was Frank Lampard very happy with him and I just don't ever want to see William and Pedro be our two wingers again so you know with that in mind it just has to be my surround at left wing and William at right wing I mean personally I wouldn't mind Pulisic and William starting with Mount in the midfield but I get why Lampard wouldn't do that especially after you know the things he said post game against Grimsby that in the first half especially but generally in the game the wingers both Pulisic and Arsenal like, didn't really do as they were told they were meant to be getting behind and get in the box and try to score goals that way and that rarely rarely happened in the second half it happened more more so on Hudson Odoi's side um to be fair it also opened up a bit more on that side but you know neither of them really did it enough like I say especially in the first half so with that in mind I would be a slight I would be slightly surprised if Pulisic starts. So probably will um, you know Mount on the left wing, William on the on the right wing, and then up front. I mean, Tammy has to start again. I guess it just has to. I mean, of course, Giroud is now back from his illness, and Michy Boychowski scored twice in midweek. But personally, I would just be shocked if it's not Abraham that starts. But you know, that is my fourth v three. You can see it on screen now. And now on the other side, which I think should be over here, we have the three four three that, of course, I mentioned. Very similar for the most part, of course. I'm just going to put up everything in one go. Christensen would obviously come in as the central centre-back with Tomori and Zuma either side of him. Aspen Alonso still the wing-backs, of course. Then in, mid in midfield, because we'd have to drop someone from the 4-3-3, Kovacic would be the one losing out in the midfield too, in my opinion. While the front three would, of course, stay the same in um, Mason Mount as the left wing, William as the right wing, and Tammy Abram up front. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I gave you my explanations of why I prefer the 4-3-3. Just think it works better. Um, and then if possible, um, you know, if necessary, rather, you know, we'll just change in game, you know, have to do what you have to do. In the end, though, we're obviously the favourites. And so we should be. And, you know, the most important things, the crucial things are going to be that we put our mark on the game, you know, dominate possession, dominate midfield, and no matter the formation or lineup we go with, we have to do that thing. Like, it doesn't matter, you know, whether it's a 4-3-3 or whether it's a 3-4-3, we have to dominate the game and dominate possession. We don't have to, like, you know, crumble in our shells, really, just because Brighton, maybe to some players, slightly surprisingly, will try to come at us basically well of course we also have to be wary of their counter attacks especially in three at the back formations counter attacking can always be a very dangerous you know play for the opponent but alongside that the most important thing is to have loads and loads of movement which we again haven't had in our recent games i mentioned the whole um you know lampard not being happy with the movements of the wingers and generally we just need more movement in midfield i mean the more movement there is the easier we're going to find it to move through the lines and to move up the field and then to create good chances. That's just that's just how it works. The quicker you pass the ball around, you know, the quick, the, the better and easier you're gonna find everything. But you can't pause pass the ball around quickly if you don't have enough movement. That's it's just as simple as that. Now, overall, in my kind of score prediction, getting into that, a clean sheet would be nice. And Brighton haven't exactly scored a lot, but frankly, I still don't see it happening, <laughs> to be honest. I still don't see us getting a clean sheet. So I reckon it will be a close game, closer than some might expect. And my score prediction is gonna be a 2-1 win. Or maybe a 3-1 win to the Blues. I think we will get that first Premier League home win of the season, which, you know, really is more than due now. Um, but yeah, to be honest, guys, that's really it for me. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I hope you found it informative. I hope you hope you enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, like I said, you know, just at the beginning, if you are, you know, if you did enjoy the video, please just drop a like. Don't know how I stumbled over my words here. But if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. You're here anyway. If you, Especially if you watched up until this point, please drop a like. It would be massively appreciated. Be sure to subscribe to Blues TV if you haven't already. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell button and choose to be notified about all uploads so you don't miss any of your future videos. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Up the chills. Can't wait for the game tomorrow. Let's get that first home win. And I'll see you when I see you.